few years ago, I can't walk in the street without someone, one child or the other, or a group of children following and say, oh, you will pay, pay. if you eat, pay. you will yellow more, more. And it's, it can be devastating. These are children that are coming in from mothers who die at childbirth. You know, they are considered evil. Or even if the woman is still breastfeeding and the child and uh, the mother dies, in the normal circumstances, according to the communities, the children are strapped to their mothers and they are buried with them. Popular opinion in Nigeria is, you know, a woman's supposed to make the dinner, clean the house, cook the food, be the um, person who does the childcare. So when you put all these factors in, literally a woman has no time to do anything else. Security agencies commonly and regularly employ torture as a tool and they are not held accountable for their actions. You're not seeing particularly officers who are held accountable, who are punished, who are prosecuted for resorting to torture in the course of their work. And we cannot uh, continue to emphasize that you cannot resort to an illegal tool to achieve legality. That's, that's a bundle of contradiction in itself. The European Union has a strong commitment to advancing universal values for all. Respect for human dignity, freedom, democracy, equality, the rule of law, and respect for human rights underpin all aspects of the internal and external policies of the European Union. The 10th of December is the International Human Rights Day. Today, it is more important than ever to recall that human rights are universal and indivisible, and that our efforts to defend them can never stop. Climate change, COVID-19 pandemic, and crisis have exacerbated some of the world's greatest challenges. In many parts of the world, we have seen worrying trends, restrictions to freedom of expression, discrimination, deepening inequalities, and increasing violence against women and girls. Achieving human rights is not only an imperative of human dignity. It is the foundation of democracy, peace and sustainable development. That is why human rights, democracy and the rule of law are core values of the European Union and they are at the heart of the European Union's work inside and outside Europe. In the framework of the EU Action Plan on Human Rights and Democracy, the European Union works in close collaboration with EU member states, with the civil society, and with all relevant stakeholders in Nigeria. We engage in political and human rights dialogues, we raise awareness through public diplomacy and public engagement, we support targeted actions with different key stakeholders, we engage with and support civil society actors and youth organizations. The European Union in Nigeria has been supporting the work of Avocats and Frontiers France in Nigeria. The EU supported a project that is called the SAFE project. This project is impl implemented by Avocats and Frontiers France in partnership with the Camelites Prisoners Interest Organization and the Nigerian Bar Association. And the key thematic areas of the project are we're looking at issues of torture by security agencies, but also extrajudicial killings and arbitrary detention. The EU SDGN phase two targets different components in its bid to support democracy in Nigeria. As the NWTF, we are working on component 5A, which is support to women's political participation alongside our partner, Elect Her. So the primary aim of our activities is to contribute to the increased participation and greater inclusion of women in political positions. We want to contribute to gender mainstreaming as well as the integrity and credibility of the electoral process. Action Aid Nigeria has been working together with the European Union in mobilizing actions towards the abolition of infanticide in our project in partnership with the Vines Heritage Home and in collaboration with the National Human Rights Commission and uh, other ministries and departments, and also the area councils where this practice is formidable. Infanticide is occurring across 57 communities in the FCT. 
Divine Heritage Home accommodates children who were rejected by their communities because of these negative cultural beliefs and myths. If children are born with a mom and they die at child, their mothers die at childbirth, if the children are twins or triplets or quadruplets, they are considered evil. The, ch the child that will follow the twins or triplets or quadruplets, like the Yorubas will say you do, you know, those ones are considered even more evil and more dangerous because they are supposed to have been the one that sent the twins that came out. And so all of them. And if you go to these communities, if you want to take a research, you go to these communities, you will not see anybody who has been twin, been a twin, or been a triplet or a quadruplet that have grown up. These are cultural practices. Well, we, we are the implementing partner for the EU on the political participation of persons with disability not only in politics but in also in the electoral process. Uh, we help to support institutions like INEC uh, to understand inclusion and drive inclusion and implement inclusion in the electoral process. The EU undertakes to ensure our response, uphold the dignity and human rights of all without discrimination of any kind. No one should be left behind, no human rights ignored. There is a huge knowledge gap on human rights among security personnel in the country. So the SAFE project has contributed to bridging this gap through trainings for security agencies. On this program, the SAFE project trained about 282 security personnel drawn across the key uh, security actors. The project has also contributed to promoting accountability for human rights violations. Um, as a result of the support received from the EU, We've had increased engagements with INEC and other relevant um, stakeholders, including traditional leaders, political parties, and the media, to name a few. So as we draw closer to the 2023 general elections, we recently organized a market outreach um, where females were sensitized by the INEC on their voters' rights, voting requirements, processes, and expectations. Um, the 400 women present were able to gain more knowledge on voting prerequisites for the 2023 general elections. The European Union has been very, very helpful and they have been very, very supportive. Because of that now, you know, the children have an auditorium where they can all sit together. I went there on Sunday and it was a huge joy for me to see these children in one room where they can sit. We are happy with where we are. We are happy to make a difference because of that funding that has been given to us. With contributions from the EU SDGN program, the recently passed Electoral Act 2022 now contains provisions that are more responsive to the needs of persons with disabilities. I mean, it is the right of persons with disability to vote in an election. We have achieved a lot, but more needs to be done. Looking at 2023 and beyond, the European Union commits to working alongside its partners to show leadership on human rights issues and to strengthen the protection of human rights around the world and in Nigeria. I wish you a happy International Human Rights Day, today, tomorrow and every single day.